All right, YouTube. I thought I'd just let you have some fun with me. Let you see me suffer here trying to get this dang battery in. Ain't nothing to it. It's just a tight fit and, and one of these cooling lines always in the way. <clears throat> On this side. The other side is a little easier. I got my uh, positive lead still covered up. Terminal. Just kind of slip that bad boy in there and put the handle back down. And start pushing it in. And there you go. Not much to it. Next, you know, we'll go ahead and uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and clean up these terminals a little bit. But you know, that's that's it. And then you uh, put your terminals on, uh, round the ground, positive to positive. Get both sides on there like that, and and uh, you know, you're you're cooking. So there, there's also a little cover right here. Let's see, this one may have screws put in it. Yeah, there's one screw right here. This cover comes off and you know you can get right down in there to the battery. Oh here's here's one of my screwdrivers. Oh. There we go. Screws all plugged up. And this cover comes off. Boom chakalaka. We're down in there. So, you know, we can do all our hookup from up here and <clears throat> see what we're, we got going. So, um, that's, yeah, that's it right there. I'm, I'm going to um, grab my battery terminal cleaner, clean up all these terminals, get it hooked up, and then, uh, you know, just for fun, we'll turn the key and see what it does. And, and we'll let you watch and you can sit at the edge of your seat and be all excited and watch this thing go click, click, do nothing. Or, you know, maybe a, a little bit of a broom, broom. And man, broom, broom, that's going to be good. We'll know that, that we're that much closer. And I don't expect it to be that quite that simple or straightforward. There's going to be a little something, something that we'll have to do. There always is. That's just the nature of the beast. Alright, I'm going to finish hooking up these batteries, clean them up, and then we'll move on to the next point. Hang with me. Alright, Mr. Willie, you say you're going to clean the terminals. And, uh, you know, surely, um, uh, most of you know how to do this. So, you know, forgive me for showing you how to do such a simple task. Uh, but some of you may not. And, and... I guess this little section here is for y'all, right? So, this is the tool I use. Um, they're pretty cheap. They're, they're two-part tool right, for the terminal. Pull this part off, and that's for the uh, the uh, connector that goes on the terminal, whatever it might be called. Right, and I'll show you how to use this thing here in just a second. I like to start with the with the ground because the ground is always a little smaller. Just turn that thing around there, around and around and around. Just like Rat said. And pull that plug off of there, a cap. Give that a little turn. What you want is nice and shiny. So, you know, this, this is something that everybody needs to know how to do because, you know, it, it goes for cars. And, everything else and this is the time of year where you know this when you end up having to do this to everything when, whenever we go from winter to summer and from summer to winter that's when the uh, batteries start going bad you know you can pay big money at an auto parts store for a battery and have them do it for you or you can go to walmart and that's what these came from do it yourself right so that's ready to go back on and I'm going to hold off just because um, the other side uh, may be touching ground and, and you know we just don't want to do that so here's the other side I'll give you a little bird's eye view there what's going on
shiny shiny that one goes on here hook them up to the ground it's not going to hurt anything and for the most part I, I like to leave these um, loose right until until everything's right uh, I don't have a need really to to leave them on there tight uh, again my alternator is not working um, I'm going to be charging this thing uh, I, this thing's been sitting around for a while there's no telling if I got some kind of draw or drain on my batteries and uh, if that's the case then then uh, you know we don't want to to drain our batteries overnight or you know between now and when we ever go to use this thing again so here's our, our other side and this is kind of what i was talking about you know this this is positive lead just kind of hanging and dangling there uh we know that the other one's in a safe condition so we would have plugged that up we'd have had a short here and uh you know would have been zapping instead of doing what we wanted to do so <clears throat> let's repeat the same process here that we did over on the other side start with negative terminal that's this one right here a little bird's eye view man just a little side note while i do this i've been planning on taking a cruise on royal caribbean Woo, i cannot wait and uh I've been doing all my homework there and trying to figure out which boat I want to take. Right now, uh, going out of Galveston. Put this down. Right now, going out of Galveston, uh, I have a choice between Grandeur of the Sea and, and Adventure of the Sea. And uh, uh, and looking at at uh, the the amenities on both of these ships. The uh, Adventure of the Sea sounds like the one I want to do, and uh, right now it's looking like maybe, well, it all kind of depends on on what I can find availability-wise. I went, got my uh, passport renewed. It's been expired since 2019, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting out there and playing and partying for a few days a few nights down Cozumel Mexico been years since I've been there a little diving there when I was younger looking forward to that adventure so all right we'll, we repeated the process Clean, clean. Go ahead and put down our our negative line cable. That's on. Positive cable. And then go ahead and put this one on because we know that the other side is good and safe. And if it wasn't right there, we would have had a major zap. All right. So this side of the battery situation is good. So hook up our positive lead on the other side. And uh, there's our positive. That's good. Yeah. So uh, any of y'all out there been on cruises and you've been on the uh, adventure of the sea or grandeur of the sea man leave me some comments let me know what you thought let me know what you thought about the cruise down to cancun cozumel cozumel is where i'm going um and also uh what i really 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 want some feedback on is is these rubber deals here um come on now i, I know there's plenty of 1586 uh hot dogs out there that, that uh take care of their own tractors and you know have restored or kept these things going and kept them in the family or what you know i need i need my lights if if you were able to find it, this little rubber piece let me know how much and where and if if you didn't and you changed it over to something different 
let me know that too because I think that's the route I'm going to have to go. And if I don't find something quick, uh, that's the route I am going to go. So, especially for these front lights. Alright, so, um, what I can say is that right now, our, uh, <clears throat> our batteries are hooked up. And, uh, you know, this is the point where we do a little electrical work. Uh, checking. So, let's put this back down here somewhere and see what I'm doing. You can see there, not no. That's probably more close up than you ever want to be on the dang battery post. But <clears throat> just to be sure, got my meter. Uh, got my ground post. Got my ground wire. Got this thing set up on voltage and we got 12 volts right there all right so that tells us our batteries are good and you know they're brand new they have to be good i used this one on this side once for jumping off my car all right so the other thing that we're going to do now is i'm going to leave my um negative wire on my negative battery and we're going to make sure that we got 12 volts coming up to here and and we don't yeah there we do so we do right okay, you see, you see that so that's the input to the solenoid and i think on the first video i may have called this a uh, a starter solenoid and it's not a actually a starter solenoid it's it's um it's a solenoid that supplies electricity to everything right so it's in a way it's a starter solenoid in another way it's not so call it what you want i can't remember what it's officially called and you can see how this uh cable ring right here is is got some rust to it uh that may be a problem we may have to clean that up so um what we should expect at this point is when we turn that key all right this is solenoid if we have 12 volts here everything's going to have power to it right um when we turn that key we'll we'll place 12 volts on this this thing's grounded and we should hear a click and you know things should start happening uh not so much starting but you know electricity to everything um if if our fuses are good well let me back up when we turn the key Solenoid turns on. We'll have 12 volts over here. This applies to one end of this uh, fuse block or fuse board, and we should have 12 volts on every end, right? I think here's the input. This is the the line coming out. Goes to right there. We should have 12 volts to right there, meaning that on every side of of this fuse, these fuses will have 12. The fuses are good. We'll have 12 volts on this side. And that supplies, you know, whatever that rung leads to. And that, folks, is as simple as it gets. I believe this right here is a, a oh, I forgot what it was now. I, I've got the prints to this, and I've got a full um, uh, three-volume set, probably 40, 50 pounds worth of manuals for this thing that I bought brand new years ago. cost me like 350 bucks. So, you know, there's there's nothing that we can't fix on this thing with those manuals. Um, you know, I've, I've got the, the cheap little uh, manual that you buy, um, you know, online. Or back then there wasn't online, but that, ha that shows you the basics. And then I've got the full shop manuals. And the shop manuals, you know, it, it don't hold nothing back. She shows you everything. So, <clears throat> all right, let's turn this key. Here's the key. We're off. When we turn the key, we should hear a click. Oh. Listen to that. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I got the key on right now. That means we got 12 volts coming in. All right? With or without the key on. And then up here, we should have 12 volts. If our solenoid's good. And we don't. 
right now we should have 12 volts right there we do and right there we don't so what that says is oh man I'm sorry y'all I'm showing you the ground my camera fell over so let me do that one more time right there we have 12 volts that's coming in try to give you a shot of everything. All right. Input to the solenoid, 12 volts. Meter, 12 volts. Twelve volts. Alright. So like I said we have the key turned on. Alright. And that's where you actuate the solenoid. And we have 12 volts. Alright. So like I was saying earlier, if you actuate the solenoid you should have 12 volts on the output of this thing. That's right there. And we have zero. Alright. So, what that says is the solenoid is bad. Or it's not grounded correctly. Right? Because it has to have ground. Um, so, you know, right now if we want to start this thing, it's not going to start. I mean, it's not going to do anything until we figure that part out. So, that's where we're at now, folks. Well, this is probably a good point to kind of back out for a second and go over what we did. We got our batteries put in. We got everything cleaned up, right? We know that that uh, our our battery wiring and everything goes to the solenoid. Right now, the solenoid is questionable. Questionable meaning we have no output. Why? That's what we need to figure out. So. Again, here's another reason why, you know, I didn't tighten down those, uh, the, the positive or any of the leads on, on the battery. Um, <clears throat> I probably will tie down the, the grounds, but right now we're going to have to take off the, the positive leads and, you know, figure this thing out. And man, this is simple. This is simple, simple, simple. You know, your, your old trucks, your old tractors, it all, it all, it's, it's the same thing same same thing so you know i'm disconnecting the battery because i'm gonna have to go in here and start disconnecting some of this stuff and, and you know you don't want you don't want to have uh these uh hitting ground when you're taking them off or zapping things or you know blowing solenoid might be good and you know by by zapping on it <clears throat> incorrectly you know, you might blow it, and, and uh, in our case, uh, you know, it's it's a run down to the parts store and get it, or order it online, and, you know, when I come back from work here in a few days, it'll be ready to roll, so we'll make that decision coming up, but for right now, I'm going to stop this, and, uh, you know, we'll start a new little section on how to get the solenoid going, so once we get that solenoid going, we'll have power to our bank, and, and you hear that? Click. Click. Hey, listen there. This thing turned over. Right on. Let's put it in neutral and see what happens. Let's put it in neutral. There's neutral. Just for grins. Let's crank on it. I'm talking about <coughs> excuse me so uh, when you put the key in 
the correct position, then uh, it, it starts where, where it should. But what, what this is telling me is that the rest of my electronics, my lights, my radios, and all that other stuff is not working. But the power to the solenoid is the, the starter solenoid. So I showed you real quick in the middle of all that noise that the, uh, the injection pump does have a leak. We're going to look at that one more time. You can see where, where diesel is squirting out. See if you can see that. I don't want to get my hands too close to that. It might be high pressure. We don't want to mess with all that. But this line right here. Hopefully, 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 it's just to cap this loose. Um, at one point, I may have run out of fuel, and I had to uh, uh, purge the air out of the lines. This 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 fuel pump or injection pump has a little pump, manual pump that you can you know pump the fuel to it. Uh, where my other uh, little Ford tractor. I actually have to get inside of it, or uh, take the lines off, and run it, and take the line off, and purge it, take the line off with injectors, and purge the air out, and it was a big old pain in the butt. This one here has a manual pump. Alright, 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 man. So, um... I am going to shut it down. I want to let it run just a little bit though. Only because the man sounds beautiful. Beautiful! is working. I remember going through it and, and getting it going. So that's awesome. Let's see if my horn works. It does. Right on. So we won't attempt any lights right now because as you can tell all those lights are, are uh, the wiring is hanging dangling. But let's see if our clutch works. No, there's no clutch there. Right, I mean, it's going all the way down, but it's hydraulic, right? So it's got no oil to it. Man, we are running. Right on, right on. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, so... Our cooling line, our cooling, see none of our gauges are working. Well, maybe it is, maybe, 
maybe our oil pressure gauge is working. So, all right, let's do the smart thing and, and uh, shut this thing down. And to shut this thing off, you know, it's it's not a key thing, right? You, you, you bring your handle down to the off position and then you turn your key off. So, all right, YouTube. Man, that's exciting stuff now. Uh, we've got it running, we got our batteries put in, um, we're going to go ahead and check the oil, uh, add, add our, uh, hydraulic fluid to this thing, and, um, you yeah, know, just kind of go from there. Uh, <clears throat> I, I need to remember how to verify that my, my hydraulic, uh, oil level is right. Um. You know, my small tractors, there's a, 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 a gauge or a, a dipstick. This one don't have a dipstick that I remember. Well, maybe it does. I just need to look at it again. You know, it's been years since I played with this tractor. So, um, definitely hydraulic oil is the next thing we're going to do. Um, then we're, uh, um, let's see. Then we're going to check the air pressure on them tires back there. And uh, if that's all good, you know, next thing we'll do, we'll get it started up again. Oh, we need to check our fuel. Um, I thought we were empty. I'm, I'm sure we're pretty close to empty. So at least 10 gallons in there. I, I forgot what this thing burns, uh, 3 or 4 gallons to the hour or something like that. So 10 gallons will give us, you know, some play time to... To get her right and ready and before we start working her which we will um we'll fill up the tank or at least you know put 100 or 200 bucks in there man 100 or 200 bucks in there my goodness that hurts that's crazy talk right crazy talk but yep yeah, that's it man i'm pumped y'all pumped 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 my 1586 fired up and and i mean it's been sitting for two or three years now and you heard how quickly and easily it just said boom wow man so if you're in the same situation i hope yours is going just as easy if not well you've you seen what i've gone through and uh you know this is it man this is what you have to do this is how it works this is you know some more things we're going to have to work through we have to figure out our electrical, see what it takes to get that solenoid working. Uh, and, uh, you know, see what it's going to take to get this thing back out in the field. Um, so, alright, for now I'm going to go ahead and stop this thing. And, and uh, man, right on. Willie LaCaille. Willie LaCaille is pumped. Thanks for hanging with me, YouTube. We'll keep going on this series. Have a